just as we're getting set up. Hey, everybody. Everybody being, uh, nobody actually at this point. A couple guys. There was one, no, zero. Where's your, does your, did yours go? Oh, there's two, it says two. Yeah, there is. Okay. A little bit of networking on a Sunday. Never hurt anybody. Um, we want to do <coughs> Cisco Ether Channel. I got my son Josh here. He's studying for a CCNA. My name's Aaron. And let me see if I can flip the camera. This is what we're doing. We have two computers. His computer is PCA. We got two Cisco switches connected together with a link. And this laptop is going to be the other computer that we'll call PCB. So, uh, Josh, if you can hold this. Mm -hmm. We'll have the PC connected to a switch. That switch connected to another switch connected to a laptop. And let's see what our IP addresses are. One nine two one six eight ten is the subnet. So one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot zero slash twenty-four. I'm the laptop is dot one zero two. I think the uh, I think the switches were ten and eleven, weren't they? We did one oh one for Oh oh okay. Well no your your computer's one oh one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my computer should be one oh one and then the switches 10. I think are 10 and 11. Are they still booting up? I'm pretty sure they're booted up already. I can go ahead and, and uh, console into one. Uh, and a... I can't ping. What's my ARP cache showing? ARP A. Oh, there you go. Well, there's no entries. Want to send a broadcast? Oh, I, I typed it wrong. 129. 192, 10. Was it 10 and 11? So the bet. The best way to find uh, IP addresses of other devices on the network is, is just pinging it and then checking your ARP cache. Okay, there's out. 11. There's 11. Okay. And is it is it 12? 11 and 12 I think or it was 10 and 11? 10 and 11. Oops, excuse me. Uh, okay, let's tell that. <clears throat> 192.168.10.11. Oh, interesting. I don't have the Telnet client installed. Okay, if you don't have the client installed, go to, uh, I think it's Add Remove Programs. There we go. Add Remove Programs and Programs and Features. Turn on a Windows feature, and then you have to enable Telnet. There it is, Telnet client. Just click that. Nice. And then you should be able to use Telnet. We have previously set up IP addresses on these switches, and we put VTY passwords and enable passwords on them so mm -hmm. that we can remotely access them from the two computers. You were able to tell that to him from your com your computer. I just don't think I ever tried it from the laptop. So let's try that now. Uh, and if you're just joining, we have a network right here, um, as shown here in the topology. We got two switches, which working. is over here on the stack. Interesting. And then we got uh, a PC on each end, which PCA is going to be the desktop here. And then PCB is the laptop. And we're looking to configure um, ether channel between the two of these. <clears throat> okay, I can ping dot eleven. Um, can you tell net to dot eleven? Let's give it a shot. One ninety two. Yep. Dot one six eight. Yeah. Um, could not open connection. Is it one six eight? Hmm. Interesting. I have the console hooked up. You yeah, here. Yeah, open the console. Because okay. I, I wonder if we're getting our IP addresses wrong. So, if I hop over here. Bring it over on this side so we can yeah. see it a little, a little bit easier. So, this is the device manager. It shows me the ports. And I can check the COM number. So, it's COM 8. 
for my cereal. Port 22, Click cereal. No, oh, not, not. I messed up, huh? Yeah, we're not SSHing. You don't need it anymore. All right, so I'm on S2. Okay, you're on Switch 2. Yeah, what's the IP address on this Switch? Um, show IP. Ah, oh, it looks like it's gone. It's gone. I don't know if gone. we, I don't think we saved the config. So it's gone. Did we configure it with one? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay, so well, let me switch does. you. I'll switch you on the console mm -hmm. to the top Switch. Okay. All right. Which is S1. So, yeah. Go ahead and... So, this one, yeah, this one has a password. And uh, I think okay. this is the one that's... Yep, so 10.11. So, the other switch was supposed to be 10.12. Why don't right. you put an IP address on that? No wonder I couldn't ping it. Okay. Yeah. So you want to just switch it over? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll switch it over. Okay. User 202 uh, is asking, do I need physical hardware for CCNA or just Packet Tracer? Thanks. Packet Tracer, uh, Packet Tracer is very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, it's very convenient. You're not, you're not lugging around equipment with you everywhere you go. You can, you can access Packet Tracer right from your computer. And uh, Packet Tracer is a lot more capable than just the few different models of routers we have here. I mean, we're fortunate because we bought these for cheap on Craigslist, a big stack of routers and switches and a couple phones. But um, Packet Tracer has a lot of what you will need for CCNA. Um, I don't know about the automation aspects of CCNA. There's, you know, CCNA has changed so much since I got mine like 20 years ago. Um, and so it was, it was a lot of routing and switching knowledge back then. And it still is. There, that's the core components. The fundamental, I mean, I think there's five sections to the CCNA, and so they're weighted like 20% for, for um, network concepts or network uh, fundamentals, and then there's another 20% for something else. I think security is like 15%. Automation is like 10%. So like I said, I don't know how much uh, you can do automation-wise in Packet Tracer. Um, so you might have to venture out into some other... Uh, area you might have to get a book or dig in there's so many look at look at cisco's sandbox devnet sandbox uh resources they're free and there's a lot that you can learn with automation there so maybe you can get just enough that you need to to get maybe five or maybe the whole 10 percent of what you need on the test for from that regard so i hope that answered your question but so, you got an IP address on VLAN. Okay, good. VLAN 1. Okay, did you save the config? I did. Here, so I can ping 10.11 and 10.12 is trying. Can you connect? Uh, Altruist is asking, can you connect Packet Tracer to a physical network hardware? I don't know. I, I don't I've, know that you can. I, I do know you can. EVNG, E V E N G, can be mm -hmm. connected um, to a physical network. I'm not sure about Packet Tracer. Here, they could, they could also look at my YouTube channel. I've done some Packet Tracer videos if they need to get familiar with it. Mm -hmm. but Where can they just find kinda, that? Just kind of basic. You can open it up. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, it's, on, it. it's on the link in my bio. Yeah, I don't believe you can you can connect Packet Tracer to physical hardware. So switch one, switch two. Switch... Two is dot twelve. Switch one is dot eleven. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your IP address? Do an IP config on your okay. computer, real quick, right there. So one seven two twenty seven. Oh, you got rid of your static. I you did. Got, oh, you got to okay. put it back in. Okay. So I'll ping Josh, and I think his computer is going to be uh, one hundred one, because I got one hundred two over here on the laptop. Yeah, one hundred one. And out of that subnet, you're going to be you be dot one hundred one. I'll put up a persistent ping to him. Um, we're doing 
one six eight, right? One six eight one zero. So y'all might have seen from the title of this live uh, Cisco Ether channel. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to put an Ether channel bundled between Switch One and Switch Two. I don't have a gateway, huh? You don't need a gateway. It's not letting me save it for some reason. One on two, one six eight. Can't save. Maybe you have to go. One or more settings. Get out of that. I'll try the other method, which I think is yeah. network and internet settings. And then I go to the other. Yeah, change options. change adapter options. No, no, no. Change adapter adapter options. Right here? Yes. Yeah, right okay. click on it. No, no. Properties. Uh, properties. Uh V4. Yeah. Just double click it. Yeah. There you go. Use, do it there. Okay. No, one nine two. I think it was detecting. I don't have a default gateway. So. 101. Just say okay. Oh, well, it's going to. Yeah, it takes a mask default. Automatically. Okay. And then if I come over here, I can config. There you go. You're good. I'm pinging you. I don't want to win. Okay. So I'm pinging Josh. So we know the network is working now. Laptop can ping PC. And so we know this is functioning. So what we want to do is, if you can hold that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Often in a network, if you have <clears throat> if you have other computers back here or servers, let's just say one dot 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 a hundred, and you've got another bunch over here. Let's even say you have the internet back here. And this becomes a problem. This link, let's say actually currently it's a one hundred meg link. <laughs> so these are old switches, so we only have a hundred meg Ethernet. But if it's if it's 100 megabit, or let's just say it's a gig, or even 10 gig, depending mm -hmm. on depending on how much traffic is going over this, you might need to increase the bandwidth. Well, if you don't have the if you don't have ports on here that can go faster, we actually do. We actually have high, higher bandwidth one gig ports, but we don't have the SFPs, so we can scale the bandwidth just by adding another connection here, which is another 100 meg link. And when bundled together on both sides, that's going to equal an aggregate 200 megabit Ether channel. So Ether channel is wonderful for adding additional capacity. Of course, if this is far, if this switch is far away from this switch, you're going to have to get the least fiber or the connectivity between here. You might even use DWDM if it's a uh, if you have access to an underlying. Uh, intelligent layer one uh, transport infrastructure. Uh, it could be DWDM, but the point is, is you're gonna have to make a connection between here. If this is just two closets in the same building, then it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But it's the same concept. No matter how far the distance is, these switches don't know that they're five feet away, uh, two inches away, sitting on top of each other like this, or one's in California and the other one's in New York. <laughs> they right. have no idea. And it's not important, just as long as you can get the, the cabling between there. So let's do that. Let's, um, let's add a connection between these. Now, I'm wondering if Cisco's got some kind of automatic, I'm, I think port aggregation protocol, PAGP, uh, was enabled back in the day on some older gear. And this is definitely older gear. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're going to see, but let's, let's check it out. Usually okay. it requires some um, actual configuration to make it work. Is this a crossover cable? It is. I believe so, yeah. And Somebody asks, is Ether Channel simply Cisco's name for port aggregation slash port bonding? That's pretty much no, exactly what no, it is, right? No, uh, Ether Channel, I, I, I don't know if it's a Cisco term, but... I don't know if it's... Port aggregation protocol was definitely a Cisco proprietary... Uh, technology for right. li bundling links together. Um, I work with Juniper Equipment too, and we refer to it as link link bundling or link aggregation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And then there's LACP, which is relative to that's the IEEE standard, right? Yeah, L LACP link aggregation control protocol, I think is IEEE, so it's an industry standard. 802.1 AD? Or is it... Uh, is it 3 AD? Did you, didn't you have it? I think I did. No, hold this. I think it's 802.3 AD. 
And when you're configuring Juniper, you actually use that command. Yeah, 3, 802.3. 802.3 802 Alpha Delta is the link aggregation control protocol standard. So let's let's see let's see if we can get these two switches um, linked up. Now, interestingly, with, without link aggregation, they're two separate connections. Oh, look at that! It's a loose connection. I just um, there we go. I won't touch them again. They're going through spanning tree negotiations, so we have one green and a couple orange. One's going to be shut off, right? It's going to be put in a block. Exactly. Right, exactly. Because they're seen as two separate physical links. These are seen as two separate links, and it's a spanning tree loop between there until you bundle them together, and then spanning tree do, uh, doesn't think it's two separate links. It will treat it as one logical connection. There we go. So I'm, I'm guessing this is the root bridge just because it's got both oh, ports forwarding. Yeah. And this one down here is orange. So I think if we tell net to the and top we can switch. Check that too, huh? Yeah. So if tell, tell, tell net to the top switch. And I'm predicting based on the link lights. One oh, or 12, right? 11. 11. I can go ether channel summary, right? And then. So we're doing all this over VLAN one, folks, right now. That, that's, you don't type that. Show. Yeah, so currently there's no ether channel going on. So do this. Well, let, let's just look at what's going on with spanning tree real quick because it's kind of nice to see it. By the way, I'll let you guys know we got about 16 minutes before we have to shut down the live. So we'll do as much as we can in 16 minutes. Um, oh, somebody's asking a question. Thank you. Somebody loves the content. <coughs> loves the content. Appreciate it. I just got my AAS in networking and working on... Oh. Um, AS, I think is what they mean. Mm -hmm. Working on my badge. Yeah, Science. cool. Love the content. Appreciate that. Thanks, man. Or woman. <laughs> um, you can use internet with a 802.1x. Oh, I think 802.1x, uh, Caleb Freeman 844, I think that's the desktop authentication, like Mac level authentication for desktops, 802.1x. It is, yeah. Yeah, I think she was... They were trying for, to, they were trying to help us out when we were trying to figure out what the LACP standard was, and uh, it, the LACP standard is 802.3 Alpha Delta, but 802.1x I think is the, uh, it's like a authentication for for end hosts. Port based network access control. Can you introduce internet with a LAN just by plugging plugging it into a switch? You know what? That's an interesting, Ryan Azen. Uh, we have a video where. In my home network, we actually took this topology, we plugged in the internet just like this, and we had this PC. It's a pretty interesting video. Go check it out on the TikTok. I even put it on my YouTube channel. Um, V4, V6 on this computer, right, Josh? And we were doing dual stacked IPv4, IPv6. Um, I think we had a router in play, though, didn't we? Yeah, because it was the router was doing slack. Um, oh, but on good. the switch, your V4 traffic was flowing out to the internet on our home gateway. We had our home router in the attic uh, on the other side of the house. Home router was here doing IPv4. And IPv6, we were just doing some testing with IPv6, and it, would, it was flowing across like that. And actually, actually, I think at that point we had a, a router right here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if you if you know what you're doing, you can introduce internet into into a LAN by plugging it into a switch. But it's gonna you're gonna need to, you know, you're gonna need to put your traffic your um you're gonna need to put it into the correct VLAN so that the PCs, uh, the computers on the LAN can actually connect to the home router that what would be their default gateway so that they can get out to the internet. So you're gonna there might be some things you have to do to tweak it to get it to work. Someone was saying you can't merge a WAN with a LAN. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, the internet is a WAN. This is a LAN. I think I just spoke to that. Um, you know that it, there you can. There's a lot. There's a lot that you can accomplish with technology if you know what you're doing. I'm just gonna say that. So um, it kind of depends. But but like I said, we we did it. 
in a previous video and go check it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know if you click on my profile, you can yeah. go to the videos. Yeah. I did a v, an IPv6 planning video and an IPv6 um, configuration video. And in there I show where we took the IP version four traffic on our test LAN and we, and we were able to send it out the IPv4 internet in our house out to the internet. Okay. And so uh, what's the easiest way to move over to SSH from Telnet? Ah, just configure it pretty much. Um, shoot. I, maybe we could, what we, I don't know if we showed that on a video that we uploaded enabling um, SSH. Yeah, we did. Where you go through a switch and you go transport. Yeah. Yeah. But what was the title of the, of the video? I'm not too sure. I think it's, it's in uh, one of the recent ones though. Uh, yeah. Retro, <coughs> retro Oh four. If you go look at some of these uh, TikTok live video, or excuse me, TikTok, TikTok videos we've been posting, and uh, you'll see how we enabled SSH. We had Telnet running. We wanted the more secure uh, SSH remote access protocol to our equipment. And we show how we turn it on. It's pretty easy. It, you're just conf you're just configuring SSH on the network device, and it's as easy as that. So. Uh, we tried hard wiring the switch to mesh Wi-Fi extender. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah. Um, not not too sure about how what exactly. It, 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 I would probably need more information to understand exactly what you were trying to to accomplish and if if it could work or not. Can one NIC host a dedicated server with a public IP and a private IP on... Can one NIC have a public and a private? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can have multiple IP addresses. You can even have V4 and V6. I've done dual stacked private V4 with a public IPv6 um, on various uh, technologies in the internet company that I work for. So you can, there's a few things you can accomplish like that. Oh, but then I got to, um, my son's trying to tell me I can flip the camera yeah. like that. All right, cool. So, do, 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 what did he say? How many switches do you guys clear? Well, we only, we have, we have two switches that we're working with right now, but then we've got a bunch of other ones over here. So, uh, okay, let's get back to this. So looking at the switch, when you typed show spanning tree, it tells you this bridge is the root. Highlight that Josh so they can see it. This bridge is the root. And so that's why port 23 and 24 are forwarding. Right there, 23 and 24. Green means they're forwarding. Orange can can mean a few different things. It probably means spanning tree blocked. Are you telling it to the other switch also? Oh, yeah. No, leave that one there and move it over a little bit so we can keep that one and then open up another telnet session and put the other one beside it. Somebody sent us roses. <laughs> Thank 10 you. Not 12. Cool. Thank you. I don't know that we said 12. Okay, yeah, yeah we, we need know. a password on that one, so we need to put the console on it. <laughs> Your console's there. Okay. Yeah, you gotta give the VTY. No, this is not um, cache swag one, two, three. This is not an IPv6 subnet exercise that we're doing. We're using IP version four, as you can see right here. IP version four. Go check out my IPv6 TikTok video and you'll see a example of an IPv6 exercise that we did. My son is studying for his CCNA, so we've been messing around with a bunch of different stuff. Okay, what were we looking at? So show spanning tree VLAN 1. If I didn't tell y'all, we are doing all this over VLAN 1 right now, just keeping it real simple. Um, we'll do some more videos later of creating VLANs. Yeah, and so it's telling us the, the cost to get to the root bridge, the root ID is that, which is this switch over here. So switch two is seeing this bridge as root and it is forwarding 
It sees the root on port 23. Mm -hmm. For, please forgive, these, name, these numbers are not the same as those. Um, and it's blocking port 24. So let's configure... 24 is the secondary link from yeah. switch to switch to. Yeah, right. But when we link aggregate them together, it's going to be one logical connection and they're going to be, it's going to be yeah. forwarding. So should we do that now? Yeah, do that. So go into 20. So I'll start with one. Start switch with switch one. one. That's fine. Go into port 23. Um, 23. Uh-huh. I think it's channel. Channel. It's going to be channel group. Channel tab. Just hit ch tab. Channel group. Um. And can you get rid of the can you get rid of the one in the background yeah, there? Because it's just that. making it look more complicated. There we go. So channel group will we'll just start call this with one. Yeah. And then it's gonna be question mark? Mode. Just or question it's gonna be mark. active, I think. Mode. Yeah, mode. And then do we want to go with PAG? Question mark. Additional L A or enable so LACP unconditionally. Active. Just go active. Just put active on all of them. So it creates a port channel interface. Right. And then we need to trunk it, right? Do show run. Interface. No, no. Quit. Quit. Up arrow. Space. Interface. Space. PO1. No spaces. Oops. That's what it just created automatically. Uh -huh. So go and put. Okay. What? You were just moving up. Do you, what do you want me to do? Is it. Go and put, um, go to the other interface and do the same thing for that one. Okay. I could have just done a range. Huh? You could have just done a range. You're taking the words right out of my mouth. I was just about to say I'm that. I'm supposed to shut those too, off before I create a channel group, right? You can. You can shut them off if you want. Well, let's, if I just go back through and go, is it 23 through 24? 23 space 24. Might need spaces. Okay, good. No. And hit the up arrow. Just hit the up arrow. You don't need to shut it down. Hit enter. Control Z, show ether channel. Okay, so it's telling us 23 and 24 and the legend or the little, the letter I, and you can check up in the legend means standalone. they're standalone. And then the SD next to this yeah. means that they're down. The port channel means it's capital S means what? Capital S means layer two. layer two. Very good. That's what we need is a switch connection. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Interface range on that one. Is it the same ones, same ports? Yeah. 23 to 24? Yep, same ports. Um, channel. Wasn't it one? Two. No, no, the same same number. And I don't think the numbers matter. Is that right? Nope, I don't think the numbers matter. I think they can be different on both sides. But Active. for consistency, stay same. Now you're telling that it into this uh -huh. and it will affect your connection. And look, they they're all they're all going orange right now. Yeah. So let's see what happens here. Should have been and, open console, huh? Yeah, now open up your console. Okay, they're coming up. Did it say up? Yeah. Or was that earlier? Was that earlier when we plugged them in? Type show ether channel on there. Uh, okay. Look at that. Yeah. S U. Nice. Uh, oh, look, the go. Telnet session came back. Okay. Telnet session came back. So it hung there for a second. And look, now they're all green. Nice. Cool. So notice how they're all green as opposed to three of them and one was yellow earlier. Now you're using all the resources here. So this is making most efficient use of your switch to switch connections. You've bundled them together. Spanning tree no longer is blocking a loop. You should be getting 200 meg of connectivity. Let's see. Go, go over here. Oh, somebody's asking, have we made a VTP domain setup video? We have not. And and thank you for the reminder. That is something I want to go through with my son and make a video of VTP. Um, different modes, client, server, transparent. Somebody else said, I don't know if this is true now, but can you split the CCN into two separate exams? 
I don't think they have them split into two separate exams anymore. They used to have a C cent, which I guess was a, a more entry level. Somebody thing. else. Uh, somebody else. Entry. Okay. So go, you're back on the Telnet screens. Mm -hmm. Control Z out of that one. Do a show uh, interface P01, no spaces. Okay. We're looking at the port channel interface that represents this connection. Look what the bandwidth is. Highlight the BW. Second line, third oh. line. BW. Bandwidth is how many kilobits per second? 200,000. Which, uh, 200, so me, which 200 is 200 meg. meg. Yeah. So, so 100 very, meg for each. Uh, 100 meg for each underlying connection, connection huh? means that we now, we now have a... Now, the way that this is viewed is P01, P01. These switches see this connection as P01 to P01. I'll prove it. Let's look at the MAC table. Watch this. Look at the MAC bridging table. Show MAC tab, ADD, enter. Uh, hit, hit, get rid of the CPU entries. Yeah, up arrow, dynamic. It's a nicer way to see it. So let's look at what MAC address. Nah, you're good. So or, I, look at this. The MAC table sees learned MAC addresses on P01, P01, P01. Mm. So there we go. So now the switches see the connection to the other switch on P01. Do this other thing. Nice. Show CDP neighbor. Right there, same, same switch. Show CDP neighbor. Interestingly, the CDP neighbor states are still seen on the actual physical ports. I wonder if it's because what CDP is. It's the Cisco Discovery Protocol. It's just an automatic protocol. Uh, I was just curious if we were going to actually see that the P01 interface was being seen where CDP was getting discovered. That's interesting. Show CDP interface. I'm just further exploring what. To what degree are we seeing uh, the PO, the port channel interface? Space, space bar, space bar. Hit quit, hit quit. Too much information. Up arrow, space, oh, excuse me, uh, pipe include protocol. No, no capitals. Yeah, enter. Okay, there, now we're just seeing a nice clean list of interfaces. So interestingly, port channel is not one of them. Huh. huh. Okay, I wonder if we could actually enable CDP on the port channel interface. Well, and so really we're done with the, the, the port channel video. One thing I do want to, want to show is I'm pinging your uh, PC over there. Okay, so from 102, I'm pinging 101. Okay, and it's very, it'll be nice to see if we disconnect one of these links excuse me let me get you in focus if we disconnect one of these links if the ping stops or if it's going to use a redundant link yeah all the traffic all the traffic should fell over immediately to the other link so that's good so i'll plug it back in oh you know what and now with that like that if you look at the port channel interface now it should say 100 meg Show interface P01. Now look, the bandwidth immediately went to 100 meg. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. Because yeah. it sees that the underlying resources have went from two links to one link. And so there's only 100 megs of capacity in the overall port channel. That's right here. Interesting. So yeah, so go over here, hit the up arrow, mm -hmm. and you'll see one of your physical connections. Hit enter. Okay. No, you were good. So one's down and one's passing traffic. One's D and one's P. Mm, see, right. port 23 is D, port 24 is P. The legend says capital D is down and P capital is P is bundled and being used in the port channel. Nice. So it's pretty cool. Let's plug it back in. If we plug it back in, how long does it take to go green? Pretty quickly. I can unplug the other one Okay, I unplugged the other one. No, no, interruption, no interruption on the ping packets. This is very good. Okay, so let's, and you'll have the opposite now. 23 should be 
pa um, passing. No, just hit the up arrow. 23 should be passing. Yep, and 24 is down now. So very good. Let's plug this in. Okay. One more thing I want to talk about with link aggregation. Show, come over here to this one. It's a little closer. Hit quit on that. Somebody likes, a couple people like the exercise. Very good. CDP ignores LACP. Okay. Packet tracer. Yeah. Bill G408. Packet tracer is some good stuff. So is Even G. So is GNS3. There's a lot of great virtual environments out there that really forego the need for hardware. We got this stuff for so cheap. We got it for $200 on Craigslist, all of it. And so my son's having fun. And so am I. You know, just playing with some some real gear uh but but they but the virtual environments are very useful um, port fast, what, difference. port fast uh i don't know that port fast would make a difference on the trunks for the um because uh yeah i think i think it's it's a matter of it going listening and learning and i just you, we're not we're not losing spanning tree on the port channel when you lose one of the underlying members of the port channel. So I think it's more just of a matter of, of LACP bringing that link back into the bundle group. MATLAB. I haven't messed with MATLAB. I heard about MATLAB when I used to work, work for Northrop Grumman. To blast and mess with. These are a blast to mess with the protocol. Absolutely. Hey, so what, what, I, what I wanted to show here was show load balancing. Tab, no, go back, no, go back. Okay, show ether channel. Ether, tab, load, load tab. There we go, Balance. enter. Okay, the way, that you're, the way that you're load balancing across these two links, traffic gets load, load balanced across these two links. And the way that you're doing that is set right here. Currently, uh, it is using source MAC address. Uh, so the source MAC address is what is dictating the load balancing. I have found that some of the best load balancing that I've gotten on link on um, link aggregated bundle groups is go into ConfT, Ether, Tab. Okay, just type um, hmm, Port Tab. Channel question mark. Load balance, there it is. Okay. No, just tap, yeah. Question mark? Oops. Qu question mark? Here's all the different ways you can accomplish load balancing. The best load balancing I've seen is source dest IP. So type source, SRC tab, DEST tab. Yeah, just tab, IP. IP, yeah. Question mark after it? All right, that's it, carriage return. That's what CR means. CR is carriage return, enter. Qu uh, control Z. Up arrow till you get that ether channel load button there, that that right there. And so there we go. Huh. Now it's doing an what X. Did we just do? You just changed. What you just did was you changed the hashing mechanism, the hashing that occurs inside of these switches of how it decides to forward traffic across these links. Mm. So how does it decide to forward traffic across these two interfaces here? And same thing. Well, we didn't do the other side. And that's another good point is every, pretty much everything you do, everything you do in networking is, is you think about it from, a, oh, I can flip the camera in, in this flip camera. There we go. Everything you do in networking should be, should be viewed in a unidirectional sense. So what we just did was we changed the hashing in switch two, where switch two will be deciding when it's sending traffic this way, uni, in that uni, unicorn, one. So in that one direction, this switch will decide how it's going to hash traffic and load balance traffic across those two member links. And we just changed it to source destination IP. It's going to consider both of those. It's going to consider the source and the destination IP address and how it hashes across that, which is very interesting because we're talking about switches. And those are usually layer two things making layer two decisions. But to be able to dive into the protocol data unit and look at the IP header, IP source and destination IP addresses 
such that it can make a hashing decision is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and so it's happening in this direction. If you're at your job and you're troubleshooting uh, load balancing, going in that direction, you would find, hitting my paper, going in that direction, you would find that you didn't change your hashing on the other switch, right? So we only changed it on one switch for that one direction. Yeah. So you'd have to go here, type show ether channel load balancing. And you would think, oh, well, I'm only doing source Mac hashing, okay? And so if all the traffic is coming into this, this device from a router, guess what? That's one MAC address. Mm -hmm. You're hashing based on one MAC address. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get very granular hashing. Right. But if it's based on IP address, IP addresses are retained throughout the transport of a packet, unless, of course, you go through a network address translator, and we're not going to talk about that. But you have more opportunity to hash on something that's different. Right. So you want to change that one to be consistent with your other side. You would, right. you would want hashing consistency, unless you have a really good reason why you want a different hashing algorithm going that way than you do coming this way. I would suggest making them consistent. So you would do okay. the same thing there. Channel, uh, is it, was it SRC? This question mark. Dash. Go back, go back, go back. I'm going to show you something. Question mark. Yeah, here's what I would do. Enter. No typos. <laughs> Less typos, right? When you're copying and pasting yeah. the real thing. Okay, so... Um, that should be good, huh? Can I go show? Yeah, it's done. Okay. And hey, we're going we're gonna to have to, to, to drop off the live. It's been fun. We'll try to do more in the future. Mm -hmm. My son's got a lot to study for, and uh, yep. I have a lot to teach. Technology is some cool stuff. I'm glad you guys could join us. Signing off. See y'all later. Okay,